Victory Bell is absolutely an underrated beast. Its ability Chlorophyll doubles its speed under sun, which often makes it the fastest mon in the battle. The move Growth, when used in the sunlight, gives you a plus two special attack, rather than the usual plus one. And with coverage like Solar Beam, it hits extremely hard. Pair that with the move Weather Ball, which turns into a 100 base power fire move in the sun, and Victory Bell can be unstoppable. Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening? Welcome back to another Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Listen, Victory Bell does not get in the spotlight as much as this thing should. It's extremely fun and honestly a super good Pokemon on the right teams. So we're going to show our pitcher plant some love today. If you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 300k and the support is greatly appreciated. Let's go ahead and jump into the match. All right, so my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Glamora. As you already know, I toss out the boy Torkoal, and we are here to make it sunny. We don't care if it's nighttime. There is now a drought, and needless to say, bitches are thirsty out here. So we actually have a pretty interesting matchup against the Glamora. Essentially, we both have the ability to lay down hazards, and we also both can spin them away. So I'm just still going to go to the, go for the Stealth Rock regardless, as that's pretty much what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and compare rocks. And so a lot of the time you see Glamora, essentially they're going to be Focus Sash trying to bait in physical attacks to be able to set up the Toxic Debris, which essentially just lays down Toxic Spike. So we trade Stealth Rock here, and at this point, I'm just going to go for an Earth Power. I know that I can take an Earth Power from them, uh, but they actually end up going for the Mortal Spin that's going to blow away the rocks that I just worked all hard to lay down, and it also gives me a Poison. So I'm honestly fine with that. Torkoal does not really care too much about longevity as long as I can take an attack and come back in. Uh, to be able to set up the drought later that's kind of this thing's role on the team so i get the earth power there that is going to break the potential focus sash and at this point what i'm going to do is go into sableye uh, there's not a lot that i want to take an attack from this thing and sableye should be able to basically come in pretty easily as an especially defensive wall and then i can finish it off with like a knockoff which you know will lay down toxic spikes but victory bell of course is poison type and we soak them boys up so they go for the earth power here try to land that on the torkoal and our little gremlin dude does take it pretty nicely. So after a bit of leftover recovery, I'm figuring you know a, a knockoff should just do the trick here. And then we are in a pretty good spot. So this thing, of course, is going to be faster. They're actually going to hit me with a mortal spin, which does give me a poison after like two HP damage, which is honestly fine. Sableye again is here to just be able to set up more sun with the prankster uh, sunny day and like taunt thing. So I go for the knockoff here and it actually lives it, which is <laughs> extremely annoying because now it sets up one layer of toxic debris and it's also, I have to touch it again, essentially, to be able to knock it out. I could go for the Will-O-Wisp, which would take it out without touching it, but I'm honestly not that concerned. I have the Poison type on my team anyway, and I don't want to run the risk of the miss anyway. So I just go for this knockoff once more, and Sableye kind of just has to get whittled down to the point where it's not going to be super useful for the remainder of the match, but uh, it's totally fine. This is a support Pokemon that is about doing what it's supposed to do. So I go for one more knockoff. This thing lays more toxic Legos on my side. And it does get the two layers up along with the Stealth Rock. So it's got its hazards, but we're able to take care of the annoying Ask Glamora. And now they have an empty switch on whatever they want to go into. So after some poison damage, Sableye is actually going to be healthy enough. However, the sun turns have been whittling down. And it's not to the point where obviously I can reset it with the sunny day. So I'm trying to find myself a position where I can get as much sun turns as possible. Or that dude Victory Bell to handle business. So on the empty switch, they decide to go into Scizor, which is perfect. I can go for... A Prankster Will-O-Wisp, nerf this thing's attack to the point where it's not going to be a huge problem. However, they're actually just going to go for the Swords Dance. So, Scizor in particular is a little bit of an interesting Pokemon for my matchup, just because if this thing starts to set up, even being burnt, a, uh, a Priority Bullet Punch can kind of, you know, punch a hole, literally, in, in, my, in my plan. So, at this point, we are able to take one more turn of the Poison. However, I don't really have anything to touch this thing that bad. I could potentially go for the Taunt, but... Um, I'd prefer to basically just get some chip on this thing just in case. Uh, so I go for a knockoff here as they actually dance again. So as it turns out, a taunt actually probably would have been the optimal play here, but I'm able to get the knockoff. It is going to get rid of those heavy duty boots. Now we got a barefoot ass scissor over here, and I am going to actually be able to stay alive for one more turn of this poison. Luckily, it's not a toxic poison, so it's going to do a, the same amount of damage every turn. We live it with 12, and there is unfortunately still one more turn left of the sunny day. If I can get in Victory Bell, I can actually go for a Terra and be able to take this thing out. But with one more turn of the sunlight, uh, I'm not going to be able to live long enough to get that up. So they finished me off with the Bullet Punch, which is fine. I was able to get a lot of chip on this thing uh, and easily get it to the point where the sun going away, I can just go right back into Torkoal and have ourselves a nice little sunny time once again. So this thing's at about half health and I'm always concerned about a Terra from this. 
uh, situation, but I just decided to go into the Torkoal, and uh, with the burn, his best damage is going to be something like an, like a knockoff, and I should be I should be relatively fine. It's got two swords dances. This boy's pretty sharp over here, but don't run with scissors. Anyway, they go for the knockoff. I'm able to barely live it. It does get rid of my heat rock, which kind of is annoying, but I fire off a lava plume, and that is going to take care of the scissor. So. They do get rid of the Heat Rock, which is kind of important because now if I somehow got Torkoal back in to set up the Drought, it would actually... The Sun would be around for five turns rather than the eight with the Heat Rock, but I, I'm not going to be able to spin away the Hazards anyway and come back in, so I'm going to have to deal with the amount of Sun that we have here. So they're going to go into one of the scariest Pokemon to deal with in this game, and that is Blood Moon Ursaluna. They're going to go right for a Calm Mind, and this thing has an insane special attack stat, and some pretty crazy bulk, and I now have to deal <laughs> with this damn thing. So I go for a Lava Plume. I'm thinking, hey, in the sun, I can get some decent damage, potentially get a burn. However, it does not, and it also ends up having the leftovers. So I get a little bit of chip damage there as Torkoal actually goes down to the poison, which is honestly kind of ideal because now I can immediately switch into Victory Bell and take advantage of as much sun that I have left. We are kind of going to come out here photosynthesizing and ready to, to take this thing out to dinner. So I bring in the Victory Bell. And at this point, I imagine it's probably going to go for a Terra to kind of reduce the damage from something like a Solar Beam. So I'm going to go instead for a Sleep Powder. My plan is to be able to set up a Growth here and try to maximize the amount of Sun Turns we have left. So they are actually going to end up going for the Terra. I'm just praying to God it's not going to be a Terra Grass to negate the Sleep Powder. Luckily, it ends up being Terra Poison, so they are anticipating the Solar Beam here. Uh, however, now it comes down to can Victory Bell C and be able to hit this sleep powder. Luckily we can, and we put this boy right back into hibernation. So this gives us a lot of momentum, mostly because if this thing stays asleep for just one more turn, I can essentially, I can set up a growth and double my special attack while my speed is also doubled, and Victory Bell has just turned the tables on being the scariest mon out here. This thing is literally Blood Moon Ursaluna, but I am plant and much scarier. So we check the amount of sun turns we have left, and I'm feeling like I can make it happen. I do need to go for a growth to have enough damage uh, on a lot of their Pokemon here, but I'm going to go for that. We just grow nice and big, and that is going to allow Victory Bell to hit extremely hard. They do luckily stay asleep for one more turn, oh, and it is time to start blasting with the Victory Bell. So they are Terra Poison at this point, and ordinarily that is going to wall both of my stabs on the Victory Bell. However, this is no ordinary Victory Bell. I'm going to light myself on fire, go for that Terra Fire, and under the sun, with a fire type weather ball, we should have enough damage to take this thing out, even with the natural bulk that it has. So we go for that Terra Fire. We are looking extremely menacing over here. This is not the pl this plant will literally eat you. It'll roast you and then eat you. So we go for this weather ball, throw some balls at this boy's face, and it is gonna be enough with that growth uh, to just straight up one shot the Ursa Luna. So down goes the scariest Pokemon that we are worried about. And now it comes down to do we have the damage to take advantage of these sun turns and get Victory Bell to show this dude he should definitely be afraid of the bell, for real. So, on the free switch, they're going to end up going into the Dragapult. So, of course, Dragapult does resist every move that I have at this point, but, again, I have a growth. I have plus two special attack, and a Weather Ball with Terra Fire in the sun is going to be able to knock out the Dragapult, and this is exactly why I needed to set up the growth. With the growth, it's just barely enough damage to one-shot a Dragapult, and uh, this Victory Bell is going places where no Victory Bell has been before. So now, they decide to go into uh, their Ogre Pond Hearth Flame. This thing is, again, an extremely scary Pokemon. However, uh, Victory Bell Victory Bell is not afraid. I'm a carnivorous plant out here. We'd be eaten. So I'm going to go for another Weather Ball. And they absolutely did not want the smoke. They're just going to straight up run from the Victory Bell. And uh, this dude will never look at the Victory Bell the same. So while he did run... You cannot escape the fact that we get to see how this ends. So while I don't have the Sludge Bomb coverage to knock this thing out in one hit, what I can do is go for a Weather Ball, do well over half. It can only hit me with an Ivy Cudgel, which does around half. I live that easily, and then we finish it off with another Weather Ball. Now, their final Pokemon is going to be the Iron Valiant, and we just go ahead and give him the old laser, and that finishes off the rest of his Pokemon. So hey, thank you guys very much for watching. I do appreciate all the support on these videos. Make sure to leave a like if you haven't already, and I will catch you guys next time. Peace out.